Thank you very much, Ru, and thank you uh, very much for this uh, excellent introduction, uh, for this very wise word, and uh, I think it was very important for uh, to hear, uh, you know, all the, the challenges that are waiting us for for the year to come. So thank you very very much for that, Ru. Uh, <clears throat> just also want to use this opportunity to uh, to thank all the colleagues and friends that uh, took the time to attend to this meeting. Unfortunately, as you mentioned, I mean, uh, this year again will be a kind of mix between face-to-face. Uh, uh, -face where We have uh, about 20, in, uh, 20 uh, people in the room and uh, mainly virtual. We have tried our level best up to the last minute to make sure that people would be coming. But uh, restrictions are still there and uh, they, they will probably uh, change over the summer. But at least uh, we are extremely happy uh, to, uh, to be here. Uh, we are missing you all. Uh, and we uh, definitely hope that the next one will be presential somewhere so that we can uh, uh, we can really meet uh, face to face and uh, resume a, a normal life and uh, and go ahead uh, with this uh, <clears throat> human to human interaction that we know is extremely important the thing that we are all missing in the virtual meeting in the discussion around the coffee and in the corridors but this will come back. So uh, thank you very much for uh, attending. And uh, so I will go uh, directly uh, in the uh, you know, update from last year. Just remember that last year was in October. So uh, now we are in June. So there are a bit less uh, things to report than usual, but um, uh, still there are a number of things that happen. So, before to go uh, exactly in the uh, report of the GTFCC, I thought it was uh, important to take a little bit of time uh, also to, uh, to look uh, at what is the context of, uh, in which our colleagues, uh, and especially in the country, are working and the difficulties that they are facing uh, in terms of uh, implementing cholera control. So I just wanted to take uh, three examples and to go very quickly over them. But... Uh, the first one is Mozambique, is northern Mozambique. Uh, I'm not sure everybody is uh, fully aware, but there is a major uh, conflict in the northern province of Cabo Delgado, uh, where more than uh, uh, 700,000 people are displaced. Uh, there is a, a very violent uh, conflict with uh, 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 Islamist fundamentalist uh, uh, insurgents that are uh, perpetrating a regular attack in the population. Uh, at some point of time, more than 36% of the healthcare facility were destroyed and four districts were uh, without any functioning uh, healthcare facility. You have below uh, the graph of uh, both uh, the number of IDP uh, over time uh, between uh, uh, 2019 and April 2021. Sorry, that are not always updated. It's very difficult to find good infographics uh, that are uh, clearly updated. And then on the left, it's a bit of a busy map, but really to see what you can see, uh, you know, in blue uh, is the area that are very difficult to access, and in, in dark blue is the area that are partially accessible, and the big uh, gray dots uh, being the, the, the size of the displaced population. So, of course, uh, for the one who did not know, I mean, you know, there was an outbreak, there is still an outbreak uh, that started in, uh, in uh, early 2019 mm -hmm. and that affected this province and that spread also to the neighboring uh, southern province of, of Nampula. Uh, another example of the difficulty, so say this one I ate a little, eat a little bit maybe uh, more the news, at least in the recent day. Uh, it's a crisis in Tigray, so uh, with uh, uh, already more than 2 million IDP uh, in Tigray, population being about 7 million. So uh, uh, it's a big part of the population that has been displaced. Uh, only uh, 0 0.5 million out of the 2 million are living in IDP camps. The other one are, are hosted in, in the family, so you can imagine the condition. Situation remains extremely volatile with uh, a regular... Uh, uh, security incident. Most of the area are not accessible. I know again the map are a little bit busy, but if you look at the second map, it's a dark blue area that are not accessible. The the, uh, the more pale blue are the ones that are partially accessible. Uh, at some point, although there are still some uh, some work being done to repair that, I mean more than seventy percent of the healthcare facility of the province were destroyed. It was a which has a very strong impact on surveillance. 
there was major damage on the water infrastructure, which uh, create a very, very precarious situation for WASH, uh, both in the ADP camp, but also in the community. And that along with many other public health issues, including COVID, uh, severe malnutrition, uh, which is uh, increasing uh, seriously since uh, since few weeks, measles and malaria. So the risk of uh, cholera in Tigray uh, is very uh, is very high. There is no uh, cholera confirmed since uh, September uh, 2019. But for all the previous year, there was a, a major outbreak uh, in um, in Tigray. Uh, so, uh, a, a no civic campaign will be organized uh, this week, uh, starting this week for 2 million people, uh, joined with a WASH uh, and uh, WASH package and OCV uh, intervention at the same time. So, for, for 1 million people, so it's going to be a major uh, operation. And the, the, the last one again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so uh, last year we uh, uh, we showed the progress uh, also that uh, uh, DRC made in cholera control and uh, you know DRC was one of the pioneers of the country in terms of re-implementing both reactive and preventive campaign dis- despite um, despite uh, COVID. Uh, including in North Kivu, I'm sure you have all heard the news. The Nyira Congo volcano uh, erupted a few uh, few days ago uh, with uh, following earthquake. So that generates uh, almost uh, four, uh, a bit more than 400,000 uh, displaced uh, that move to other parts of North Kivu, but also to the province of South Kivu and to Rwanda. So uh, along with the earthquake, major infrastructure damage, uh, especially for wash in uh, in Goma, but also uh, precarious in places where people have uh, seek asylum or refuge. You all know that the area was vaccinated, uh, was uh, the area of North and South Kivu is endemic for cholera, and it was a place where uh, vaccination took place both in 2019 and 20 preventive vaccination campaign. So that's reduced the risk. The coverage of this, uh, uh, the figure that I have put are the, 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 the second trend coverage, administrative coverage, good uh, uh, good coverage, but bear in mind that only part of the air de santé were vaccinated. So significant part of the population remain unvaccinated. And with the population movement, uh, the cholera risk remain. So um, I will conclude with this one, but I think, you know, even in country where, you know, significant efforts are made to uh, to make significant progress toward cholera, uh, national uh, natural disaster, or for the two previous examples, uh, major uh, conflict and civil war can put everything back to uh, almost zero. So... Uh, to go in the in the topic, so for previous year, I will follow the the, uh, uh, the, the, the presentation by the uh, by the axis of the roadmap. So uh, not much in terms, uh, not much new in terms of uh, you know AP data. You know they were presented in October last year. They are the same because the data are collected now, and uh, the, the data for 2020 will be available in September this year. So uh, just the thing that was updated, it's, you know, overall, and this is just an indicator of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the activity because uh, GTFCC and the roadmap is not just a CV, but 87 million of doses were, were shipped to uh, 22 countries. And here I've put uh, since, uh, since 2030, um, which, uh, which is a, a significant uh, achievement. Uh, in top of the uh, the uh, conflict that I have just mentioned, I mean, we all know that COVID had a major impact on uh, uh, on the implementation of cholera control activity. First, at the start of the outbreak uh, in, the, in 2020, the impact was extremely strong uh, in generating, uh, you know, a lot of disturb- disruption in the health services, repurposing of all the staff. Uh, the uh, difficulty of access uh, to uh, to healthcare facility due to uh, to uh, confinement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there was a major, major impact, uh, but also a very reduced capacity and, uh, and bandwidth, if I may use this expression, for uh, people in the country to be able to think about something else than just COVID. Uh, now, uh, as you uh, remind, I mean, you know, the, act- the, the pandemic is not only uh, uh, still active and some countries are facing major outbreak, uh, second wave, third wave, uh, and even more, but also the vaccination of COVID is also uh, generating an additional burden on the health uh, 
uh, structure, especially in the South, there are not enough vaccines, but on top of that, I mean, to implement vaccination campaign uh, is also pulling on these very scarce resources in this resource limited country. So, um, so the, the, uh, what we have seen, or at least uh, what we can guess from, from the data we have, it's, uh, you know, there was very likely a positive impact of COVID due to, uh, uh, you know, increase in washing, social distancing, reduction of travel, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and also, and that's a good news. So that's what we uh, we were guessing at the end of last year, but that we can really see this year. It's the uh, several country, country, including country facing many difficulty, uh, uh, and that's the three one I've mentioned. Have really restarted uh, getting actively engaged and involved in further their. Uh, uh, cholera control plan, and again, just as an indicator uh, of the uh, the activity, uh, in uh, the the first uh, quarter of 2021, there were more doses of OCV that were sent than for the whole year 2020. So, uh, so this is uh, this is another way to look at that. So, uh, as you can see, the uh, the data, uh, so this is the data uh, regarding the number of OCV doses that were shipped uh, by, uh, by quarter. Uh, so you can see in the middle the very, uh, for 2020, the very strong uh, impact of COVID. And uh, since the fourth quarter 2020 uh, and continued into 21, the very strong uh, uh, um, restart of uh, use of vaccine. Uh, so uh, you can see as well, uh, this is uh, the, the, the larger number of vaccines that have ever been shipped in a period of nine months. And uh, for the, uh, these doses altogether, I mean, 68% were used for preventive campaign also uh, in, uh, in, five, uh, in five countries, which is a very, very positive sign in terms of resuming activity. I mean, of course, this has, uh, you know, every medal has its... Uh, or the dark side. Um, so, um, uh, and this one is the short of, uh, of vaccine. So, um, so in 2020, uh, as you know, well, as you know, we have only two uh, manufacturers of uh, OCV. Chancol, the, the, the production uh, has been completed for this year. So uh, most of the doses have been shipped and there will not be any more production for the rest of the year. And for uh, UV, UV call, for which there is a vaccination plan uh, or availability of vaccine of uh, 28 million for the whole year. Uh, if we look on the right uh, graph, where it's a cumulative, huh? it's a cumulative uh, uh, request, you can see that uh, almost 14 million of doses have already been shipped out of these 20 million. Uh, uh, we need to keep 3 million for the emergency stockpile. And you can see May, June, and July that the stockpile is below what it should be. Uh, and given the situation I have presented, uh, you know, for the three countries, including Mozambique, DRC, and, uh, uh, and Ethiopia, it's important to, uh, to be safe on the emergency stockpile. Uh, and so uh, in yellow, in a pinkish, sorry, uh, so these are the plan uh, campaign, forecasted campaign for which we don't have the date yet. But you can see that, you know, if all the campaigns that are planned would be uh, implemented, we will not have enough vaccine uh, with the current production plan. And that does not take into account any emergencies that could take uh, place in between. So uh, another thing which will be uh, uh, important, so I'm not going to go in all the details because this will be presented in more detail, but uh, as uh, uh, we discussed a little bit last year, uh, you know, uh, we need uh, definitely and urgently better data to inform decision making, and that's uh, a critical need is essential for all the, four, the, the five pillars. Um, and so uh, we have with a partner and the, uh, the GTFCC partner and the, the technical working group start a very large work in, in terms of region of uh, surveillance, uh, so epidemiology and laboratory guidance. So with four axes, uh, to keep it short, revision of the minimum standard of surveillance, but you can see that it's entail a lot of things. Uh, strengthening the regional approach, uh, build laboratory capacity, 
uh, and further develop the GTFCC uh, hotspot uh, assessment method, which uh, all of this is extremely important to be able to target, I mean, first to early detect uh, outbreak, to early response to outbreak, but also to better target uh, where are the real hotspots, how can we better define them, and therefore prioritize the intervention uh, and adjust them, tailor them to the real situation in the country. And all of this being, uh, you know, fed by colleagues from the other working group, from the OCV, the worst, the case management, and uh, soon the community engagement. Uh, so, uh, for the watch, so the, the big news of the, well, at least for the GTFCC Secretariat is, uh, so thanks to the uh, uh, Swiss Agency uh, uh, and Cooperation uh, SDC, uh, so we have a new uh, focal point, full-time full focal point for watch, Justine, so I'm, uh, many of you have already started to interact with her, but that's really an opportunity for us to go you know, uh, full speed in terms of the development of WASH that we know uh, is uh, is important. So we have already, uh, as mentioned for Ethiopia, uh, we are already working on trying to implement OCV and WASH integration, uh, including during emergency campaign. Uh, there are much more, uh, and I'm not going to go into detail because it will be specific presentation, but uh, advocacy for WASH project is something which is important. Uh, collection uh, methods, data, uh, integration with other pillar of which data, this is something which will be also very important. Uh, in connection with community engagement, we need to develop and, uh, a simple and straightforward messages for, uh, for cholera and wash. And uh, as much as possible to build on COVID ex experience and the, 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 the positive things that come out of COVID, including, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the end washing and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, continued, so, uh, so something new, and I think this is something that for me, uh, uh, I consider it's too often neglected. It's the community engagement part. I keep on saying that I believe that the community and the individual should be at the center of the intervention and not just be a sidetrack. So uh, there is still not uh, uh, a specific working group working on the, uh, on the community engagement. But this is something on which we have started to work with partner, with partner already engaged in uh, in community engagement. So, uh, so we are the first step. But this is something that will be further developed uh, in the uh, in the coming years and months. Uh, case management. This is also something that remains extremely important. Too many people die just because they don't have access to healthcare facilities. So. Uh, uh, so there is work uh, done on uh, community case ban management, but also the identification of the, uh, the, the suspect cases in the community, but also a lot of technical work on uh, how to improve uh, case management on specific settings, like, for example, uh, rehydration of uh, children under five or antibiotic use. And something which is important, because you will see that it's coming also with, with other work package, it's... Uh, uh, different diagnosis and therapeutic approach for other diseases. We are trying to, to also try to find ways with, uh, you know, connection with the rest of the world. I mean, it's not just about cholera. So uh, in terms of uh, uh, development of the, the, the strategy, so for the people who were there last year, I mean, you can see that there are much more uh, big, bigger list of countries uh, compared to, uh, to last year. So uh, especially in terms of uh, uh, on, uh, on hotspot, uh, Burundi, Ethiopia, Kenya, Sudan, Yemen, Zanzibar, uh, Zambia, and Zimbabwe have used the GTHCC methodology. It's in very good progress with Cameroon, Mozambique, Nigeria, and Togo. Uh, bear in mind that many other countries have their own methodology before, huh? so it does not mean that they don't have a hotspot strategy. Uh, and as well for the NCP, so four have been launched, uh, Bangladesh, Somalia, Zambia, and Zanzibar. Three have been submitted to IRP, uh, Ethiopia, Kenya, and Zimbabwe, and uh, are in progress in Cameroon, DRC, Mozambique, Sudan, and Tanzania for the mainland. So, uh, of course, uh, you know, one of the big uh, activity, and this despite COVID, we try our level best to continue uh, active engagement with partners. 
So uh, the, the virtual meeting that were initiated last year and replacement of the physical meeting have continued so as there have been many uh, uh, working group meetings, sub working group meeting for, 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 for surveillance, for lab, for wash, uh, OCV will come, uh, etc. So this will continue. Uh, again, I want to reiterate that as soon as we can resume face to face meeting, we will. So <laughs> this is beyond our control. Huh? This is COVID, but it will come. Uh, technical guidelines continue to, uh, uh, to, develop, to, to be developed. Uh, advocacy as well. So we just finished with the, uh, the, uh, the uh, side event on WHA uh, uh, and uh, we will continue for the rest of the year. So research agenda, which has been mentioned for this is a very important uh, aspect and uh, we'll try to ensure that, you know, all the work package are contributing as much as possible in this uh, in this um, uh, research agenda and its implementation. So not just the list, but really how we can feed into that. And we have continued to improve the accessibility to non-anglophone partners. Uh, and this with the, uh, the objective also to make it much more feasible for the, the uh, 30% of the country that are not English speaking uh, to, uh, and that, uh, that are francophone. Uh, to, to participate. So uh, most of the key documents are now translated into French. The website is in French uh, and in English, of course, but um, uh, the app uh, is in French. I just use this opportunity as every year and I will continue uh, download the app, use the app, share the app. Uh, people in the field find it very useful, but some, most of the time they don't even know it exists. And we have started, uh, and we will continue to to, uh, to implement it as much as possible. Uh, simultaneous translation a bit, uh, in English and French to uh, to improve accessibility and participation of uh, non anglophone uh, colleagues. So, uh, as far as the operational model, I mean, it was announced last year. Huh? So, uh, the, the 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 big news was the. Uh, Announcement uh, as mentioned by by Flo, the, by the, uh, the of the uh, selection of the CSP. I'm not going to go in the uh, in the detail of the country support platform because there will be a fully dedicated session on that. Uh, but there are uh, significant progress made in the in the coming weeks. Uh, so uh, we have changed, uh, or they have changed themselves. Uh, four of the working group chair have changed out of five. Uh, so uh, the renewed membership is still active and the independent review panel is also uh, is also in progress uh, as uh, last year. There, I mean, there was only one and now three, uh, in total, three uh, NCP have been reviewed by the IRP and there will be just after me a presentation on the IRP. So uh, the way forward, I mean, uh, nothing extremely original, but it's really to continue in the same direction. So we need to continue to support and implement the roadmap uh, and uh, and monitor its implementation. And the monitoring would be a, a key component that we need to uh, to focus on on the on the time to come. Uh, reinforce surveillance capacities, as I have mentioned. It further support the the, uh, the hotspot analysis to allow targeted multi sectorial intervention. Continue to ensuring the most appropriate and strategic use of OCV, and especially in regard of the low uh, low availability of OCV. Uh, we need to put more uh, emphasis and advocacy and uh, and effort into WASH because we all know it's a long term solution. Uh, something which is very uh, very important is really also to continue uh, uh, to uh, to uh, develop synergy and to uh, avoid the silo functioning between the different pillars. So uh, you know it's uh, it will be more and more you know OCV and WASH surveillance and uh, and case management etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is something which is very important. But also something we need to uh, to explore is how we can benefit for other existing disease programs like uh, you know yellow fever, meningitis, polio, uh, uh, or others to uh, to avoid reinventing the wheel. And there are some 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 resources that are available that we could uh, probably uh, build on, and not to have to replace everything. So this is also one of the axes of of uh, working. And of course, last but not the least, further advocacy and. Uh, of course, with advocacy is resource mobilization and resource mobilization, especially for the country to implement their activity. So uh, just I uh, want to thank all the partners. So the list is not all there. So uh, 
but uh, really thanking everybody uh, who has supported us during uh, all this year and before, and I know that uh, will continue to support us. So thank you very much for being here today. And I will stop here. <laughs>